Unit 3 and Unit 4 are combined together because they both involve the topic solving systems of linear equations. And I guess probably the first thing we need to talk about, since this is the whole topic for Unit 3 and 4, is what is a system? A system is any set of two or more equations that need to be solved at the same time. We're going to solve them together. They have the same solution. For example, let's say, and what we're, what we're going to do mainly in Unit 3 and 4 is we're going to have equations that have two variables. Let's say an x and a y. If you have two equations that have two variables, you need to have two equations to match those two variables. The number of equations and the number of variables have to be the same. Next year in math, a lot of you may see problems where you have three variables, such as x, y, and z. Therefore, you're going to need three equations. In other words, the number of variables in your problem equals the number of equations you need to solve the problem. An example of a system of equations would be this. This is what we're going to work with during this video. Negative 4x plus y equals negative 7, and 5x plus y equals negative 6. This is an example of a system of equations because we have two of them, and they are both linear because the highest power of x is, is 1 in both cases. These two equations form a linear system. And I hope that at least answers what a system is. Now, if you need to pause the video, please do to copy the notes down. Otherwise, I will go ahead one slide. When you have a system that is linear, there are three types of linear systems. The first system would be the one where your two lines intersect. And this is by far the most popular linear situation. And the whole key to the problem is the intersection point. You must find that point because that's the answer to the problem. Now, this particular situation will always have only one solution. It is what we call consistent and independent. The second type of linear system is the one where the two lines are parallel. In this particular situation, this is called an inconsistent system. Oops. Inconsistent because there is no solution to the problem. In this particular case, when you have a system that meets this criteria, the two lines will have the same slope, but they're going to have different y-intercepts. So make sure you make note of that. The third and final system, the third and final type of systems, is the one where the two lines are exactly the same. And I hope you notice that my red line and my green line are supposed to be right on top of each other. This is a type of system that is called consistent and dependent. Now, the reason it's called consistent and dependent is because the solution to the problem 
is equal to all real numbers. All real numbers make the system of equations true. And how can you tell? Because this particular situation, the two lines will have the same slope, but they'll also have the same y-intercept. Very important to note. And that's the difference between the three cases. Please pause the video and copy those notes down if you need to. And make sure you know the distinction and the difference between them. Now, what does it mean to be a solution to a problem? If you're, if you're posed this question, basically it means the given solution will work for both equations at the same time. I'm going to go back to our original problem that I wrote on the first slide. Negative 4x plus y equals negative 7. And 5x, I'm going to write this a little lower. I'm going to write down 5x plus y equals negative 6. And the question that I'm going to pose is the point or coordinate 1, negative 3, a solution to our system of equations. Well, the way you check that is you put 1, negative 3 in for both of them. So let's check. I'm going to write the first equation again, but I'm going to substitute a 1 in for x, and I'm going to substitute negative 3 in for y, and I'm going to put it in parentheses like we talked about in unit 1. Does that work? Well, if we check it, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, plus negative 3, does that equal negative 7? Well, yes, it does. So that checks. But we need to also check the second equation. So I'm going to write the second one out. 5 times 1 plus negative 3, and the question, does that equal negative 6? Well, if I write this out, 5 times 1 is 5 plus negative 3. Does that equal negative 6? No, it doesn't. That does not work. Therefore, is 1, negative 3 a solution? No, it is not a solution. This point has to work for both equations at the same time. If you have further questions about that, please ask me in class. Finally, what we're going to study in Unit 3 and 4 combined is four ways to find solutions to linear systems. The first way is by graphing. And this is in Section 3.1. And this will be on the next video. This method we are going to study. Method number two is called substitution. This one you learned in Algebra 1. So this one I'm not going to cover. There's actually, extra, actually an extra credit assignment that deals with substitution. The third one, and probably the most popular, is what is called linear combinations. There's other names for it. Sometimes people call it the addition method. Sometimes it is called the elimination method. And the last method that we're going to study in this unit is the method of matrices. So the three with the star by are the three that we are going to look at and practice during this course. Uh, the substitution method, as I mentioned, we did during Algebra 1. So if you'd like to pause the video and copy those down, please do. But otherwise, that wraps up this video as an introduction to what we're going to do in Units 3 and 4.